A very warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, from around the world to Magic Fest Los Angeles. So let's get to it. It's time for round number one of Magic Fest LA. The format is modern, and let's kick things off. On your screen, ladies and gentlemen, we have Patrick Harden and Ben Bateman. Patrick Harden is playing a real blast from the past. He's playing Green Black Elves. I'm really excited to see how this one goes. Is it Phoenix on the right-hand side of the screen here for Bateman? Just as we drew it up, Luis. There it is, Young Peasy coming down, gonna lay down the freshest mixtape of 2019, but Gutshot, the first hit single. I would suspect that Dismember wants wants to be played here because letting a Pyromancer run rampant is exactly how you how you lose the game quickly. Look at the sequencing here. Patrick played Elves of Deep Shadow, then Dismember, and got hit by a second Gutshot, Ouch. making a token. Oh my goodness. Had he done it the other way around, that Gutshot just wouldn't have had a target. So basically what happened here is Ben got an extra token. We'll see how that extra token proceeds over the course of the game. Light up the stage now. Oh, and a perfect light up the stage, hitting Steam Vents into Thing in the Eyes yeah, there. Yeah, wow. So Scavenging Ooze and ships back to Bateman. But, I mean, if Bateman's hand is even halfway decent, he should be able to crack into six in the air here, Louise. If Ben can find another spell off this opt, then then we might see a double fe or a single Phoenix plus Bolt. But actually, it looks like Ben's taking a different route. Thing in, the, thing in the ice to play now for Bateman. He's got an Anger of the Gods in hand as well. You know, Ben's actually close to just hard casting Phoenix. I think so, yeah. yeah. Big attacks now for Bateman as he lines it up in for five. Looks like Harden's going to block with the Elf and then cast Company. I would have been tempted to just Company first to try to, to assemble a pair of blockers here. Just hit a couple of 2-2s, two right? Yeah. All right. And note that the one damage from Horizon Canopy adds up here because Harden's going to fall to 2 now. And that that puts him dead to any Phoenix hit or any Bolt or potentially a token plus a Gut Shot. For real style points, jump, jumping in and out of the battlefield here, this, uh, this Phoenix. And so draws off the Metamorphose, Awoken Horror trigger resolves and now a faithless looting to oh, pin wow. it as well yeah, oh well, style points out the I mean, wazoo what did, we say, what did we say game one what, why win if you can win big exactly and, <laughs> Bateman's gonna be able to discard this phoenix and get back two copies of Arcolite phoenix along with the thing in the ice or Woken Horror rather and attack for you know, just the full 13 just no big deal just oh, also with a lightning bolt just <laughs> <laughs> oh, after that he goes lightning bolt upstairs doesn't want to get it done with his creatures a masterclass there from Ben Bateman in the end and you can see these players wrapping things up in the feature match area. Turn one, Swamp, Simeon Spirit Guide, Simeon Spirit Guide, Magus of the Moon. Oh no, Jacob Brooks, you have chosen poorly. Daniel Trong with double basic in hand. He is going to be right as rain, Louise. Oh yeah, and you know, Daniel may not even pass to exile that Magus. It, 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 he, he will in response to this this collective brutality most likely but it is just funny how how irrelevant the the the, the blood moon effect is on against this particular hand an embarrassment of liliana's here for jacob brooks looks like he's going to go for the last hope and it will resolve so liliana the last hope joined by liliana the veil here comes jace we're brainstorming oh wow oh no look at this so Jacob didn't hit the land to play his Chandra, did hit Bedevil to kill Jace, so this, this Planeswalker matchup not, not quite happening, and also in a spot where he can't use Lilian of the Veil, does not want to discard his Chandra. Ooh. <laughs> Here's a Teferi. All right, we, we got a Planeswalker battle. Now yeah. what's going to happen is Teferi gets to minus three and tuck Lilian of the Last Hope back down into Jacob's library. Lilian of the Veil still hanging around, but Tron will be very aware of that, and uh, he's, I think the card in hand he's got to discard his, his perhaps a spell snare which doesn't do a huge amount here. Oh, this oh, was a great draw too. The Goblin Rebel Master and Re that's going to be able to get in and punish Teferi. Oh wow this is this is a uh, you know there's haymakers back and forth. Back to Trong who has found a tidy answer now in Celestial Purge. That's a nice one from him. Oh yeah Celestial Purge is is, is excellent here. The Goblin Rebel Master hitting the Exile Zone main phase here. Yeah so here Snapcaster into 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 Celestial Purge is is a is a pretty good is a pretty good play here. Snap custom age hit the bin thanks to Liliana's edict effect. Puts two back on top here, and now I think we're going to see a Gideon of the Trials that probably going to bubble that goblin here. Yes, indeed. Oh, and that is excellent because Gideon is going to be able to threaten Liliana quite nicely. And the Planeswalker balance has swung. Another nice little sequence here from Trong, unsummoned from Jace, and then an attack from Gideon of the Trials, removing Liliana of the Veil, and Brooks now just doesn't have he hasn't been able to play keep up this i mean this should be the last turn of the game here for him he's on three facing down active jace active gideon a handful of interaction daniel trong activates gideon gets in for the final points of damage and jacob Ooh. brooks goes down picking up his first loss of the day
All right, let's uh, let's get stuck in here to uh, game number three. So Takahashi's on a, a classic conundrum. Do you play the tar pit on turn one, or do you play Serum Visions on turn one? And uh, we'll, we'll see which way the wind blows here in just a second. No place here for Gibson, and maybe a handful of cyclers for him to deploy at the end of turn. But uh, Takahashi now with this spell bomb active. So Takahashi, the mana kind of kind of awkward here. It might just be bitter blossom time. But he's not the only one with a fairy now. 2-2 Fairy Macabre in play for Gibson. Yeah, and that's just not going to get the job done against Bitter Blossom. Oh, wow. So a decision Kyle made earlier is actually coming back to bite him. He chose to kill Watery Grave instead of Dark Six Shores. This Street Wraith has Swamp Walk. Yuta doesn't have any swamps in play. <laughs> oh, no. Watery Grave would have been a swamp. Oh, no. Here's a Liliana of the Veil now. And immediately going downstairs, and the Fairy Macabre hits the bin. Down comes a 4-4 that has to attack every turn. Here's another uh, fairy token for Takahashi. Maybe go Snapcaster Inquisition or Snapcaster Serum Visions and then and then set up a Liliana next turn. Plus one Liliana this turn. Next turn minus two, play another Lily minus two and really effectively eliminate all of Kyle's threats. Yeah, this is just future truths with LSV, ladies and gentlemen. Double chumps here with the fairy tokens, ultimately saving a little bit of life here for Takahashi. But uh, as you mentioned, Luis, I think here the double Liliana play is going to clear the board quite nicely, leaving Takahashi with the, uh, well, the biggest, uh, the biggest creature on the board in a 2-1. Up goes Liliana of the Veil, discards. And now across comes one of these fairy rows, going to knock Gibson down to 13. Spell stuttering the fairy macabre, I think, is a, is a good play because mm -hmm. Yuta has every, every base covered and... Uh, being able to play Jace the Mind Sculptor and not really worry is, is a great position to be in. And we're going to see a Jace the Mind Sculptor. This is the... We might even be in Fate Seal range here. Just right away. When you have this this game so locked up, you don't need extra cards. You don't need to bounce anything. Oh, Luis. Luis, how does he do it, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen? How does he do it? Big attack now for Takahashi. Going to trade off that uh, Fulminator Mage with his Snapcaster Mage. So dueling mages go down. Another card off the top for Gibson. Doesn't seem to have a good use for it. Ships the turn. It's probably going to get eaten by that Liliana of the Veil. What Yuta has done is really just put himself in a position where he, he can just end the game right away. So, And that is going to be that. Yuta Takahashi taking it out two games to one. Gibson able to steal a game from the Fairies player, but it wasn't going to be enough. The storyline here is this is... Dana, she's eight. She has wanted to be the youngest player to make day two. All right, so we're going to get underway here and see if it's going to be Dana or Scott to make it into day two. So, Lana or Elves on the battlefield. Will it survive the first turn is the first question, and the answer is no. Fatal Push shoves it away. Dana draws another land off the top of her library, and she's going to go with Tap Land, Nettle Sentinel. Is that a Languish? In Scott's hand, I'm pretty yes, sure it is. Yes, it is. And a Graft Digger's Cage. Wow, Languish could be brutal here. The Graft Digger's Cage will shut off the Collected Company. So there's the lead the Stampede. Wow, that was a grip of cards off the lead. Tidings for three mana. No kidding. I don't know about yeah. the decision of Thought Seeds here over fetching for your green because you know you can't really do damage to Dana's turn. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to slow her down the most possible. By taking away a mana advantage and also taking away the ability for her to cast like three spells in one turn or whatever. So she she's just going to go with Elvish Archdruid and pass the turn. Here is Dark Confidant though. Knocking the life total a little bit lower for Scott thanks to that Tarmogoyf. So that Ooh, Dwinen's Elite adds two itself. Right, so that gets... That's three. And another lead the Stampede. She's really prioritizing <laughs> keeping her hand stocked rather than dumping out anything. And she it, hit it's going to pay four. off. Oh, my God. Another four. <laughs> See Scott shake his head. He's just like, dang. Multiple Shaman of the pack there as well. Uh oh, there's Heritage Druid. Make three mana. Dana does not care about Damnation. She does not care about Languish. She's just running it all out there. This is six damage, though, without even having to attack. Yeah, I mean, she She's still has lethal plenty here. to beat a Languish, even if yeah. even if Scott hits, you know, or that's if he a, doesn't hit a land here, it's just over. Drawings, that's a great point, and she has put out lethal damage. He needs a land. Collective Brutality, I he's, highly doubt that's enough. He's down to seven. Dana might be in the in position here. I mean, she has another Shaman of the Pack, or no? Yeah, and this is it. Scott passes the turn back to Dana. 
knocking she cards over. Draws it's her cards. She's, she's getting so excited. Dana knows what's going on. She knows what's about to happen here. She's going to lead off with Elvish Clan Caller, which does pump up all of her elves, by the way. And here it is, Shaman of the Pack. Two, four, six, seven. You go down to two, and she knows what to do with the rest. And Dana Fisher makes day two here in L.A. A huge hug from her dad. I know how proud he is of her right now, and what a great moment. God, that's sweet.